Hey guys, all right, uh, today we're doing organ systems. This is lab number two. Um, I want to start off with uh, test taking skills and strategies. Um, just uh, a few things just to remind you guys of uh, when you're taking tests. Um, hopefully we'll be in class, but uh, if we're not, if we're online, same kind of rules apply. Um, answer the whole question. Read the whole question uh, and answer the whole question. Sometimes there's multiple parts, and so make sure you answer both parts. Uh, answer each question. Always answer every single question. Even if you don't know the answer, try to write something down. Fill in the blank. Always, always, always write something. Uh, whatever. Just uh, make up something if you don't know the answers. I give partial credit. Um, if if I feel like you're, you know what you're talking about, but you can't quite pull the answer, the exact wording out, um, you know, give me something close. Multiple choice. Uh, choose an answer. Try to reason it out. Um, if you can eliminate a couple answers, that always works really well. Uh, never leave a question blank, um, unless this is a standardized test. And standardized tests, sometimes they uh, mark off for wrong answers, but I don't do that. So always, just always answer the questions uh, on, on the test. Um, on a standardized test, if you're taking one of those like the SAT or ACT or something like that, uh, always I, generally the rule is like choose C if you don't know an answer. If you can narrow it down, uh, then you improve your chances significantly, but uh, it's easy to just to choose C and choose the same one all the way through uh, the test. Um, and then finally, uh, look over your test before you turn it in. Put your name on the test, make your name legible, look and see if there are any blank answers, look and see if you've marked more than one answer, um, make sure the answer you marked is the one that you want to mark, uh, just check over your answers. <clears throat> um, then check the test again, just to skim over it at least. And uh, don't, don't turn the test in until you're sure you have uh, answered all the questions. I have students every year, uh, every other test, there's somebody who turns it in, they forgot to answer a question or two, and you get a zero on it. So that's that really, they, they're rushing out of the room because they want to go, they're worried about one answer, but they forgot to look over the test and see if they actually, actually answered all, all the questions. So they rush out of the room to go check their phone and see what the answer was. And so anyway, just check over your tests before you turn them in. Okay. Now on to organ systems. Okay, so um, this is unit two. And so organs and organ systems, um, homeostasis and homeostasis and rat dissection. Those are the things we're gonna do today. Um, so the topics we'll cover today are what is an organ? What is an organ system? What organs and organ systems are there in the body? Where are they located? What is homeostasis? What does a rat look like inside, and how do I get the plastic parts back in the right places on the on the torso model, which is actually a lot harder than you might think. So, <clears throat> but back to number one, what is an organ? Well, it's a part of an organism. So an organism is the whole thing, like me. I'm an organism. Uh, it's a, which I'm a self-contained unit. Um, an organ is a part of an organism that is also self-contained and has a specific vital function, such, such as the heart or liver. An organ system is a group of organs that function together and provide, working together, they provide a certain function. So you'll have like the heart and the blood vessels. <clears throat> so those two, so blood vessels will be considered an organ and the heart's considered an organ and those two things together would be an organ system. So that's a simple example of one. We're going to go through, the, through all the organ systems here in a second. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> So the major organs, their functions and organ systems. The hierarchy of the body structure, we're gonna go over that. We're gonna go over the 11 uh, different organ systems, each with uh, each of the specific organs and their functions. Um, there's 11, sometimes you say there's 12, it depends, I'll talk about that in a second. An organ system is a group of organs that perform, perform a common function. Organ systems work together to maintain homeostasis. And homeostasis is the maintenance of a relatively stable physiological equilibrium. And clinically, you have, um, you can kind of divide it into um, three different ranges. The normal range, a caution, like yellow range, and then a red alert range when you're way outside the normal range. So, um, all right, next slide. So here's the hierarchy of the, <clears throat> of the body's structure or structural levels. So what we have are, <clears throat> I'm going to start at the right side over here. So we have, at the organism level, we have the whole organism here, okay? So 
Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. And then over number five, we have the organ system level. Okay. So we have various organs put together into an organ system. Then we have the organ level. We have the tissue level. So an organ is made up of tissues, which are groups of cells that have a function. And a tissue made up of cells. So we talk about the cellular level. And then cells are made up of chemicals. And uh, also there are chemicals floating around the body that do different things. So um, we'll talk, talk a little bit. We're not going to talk much about the chemical level in lab. Most of that you'll do in lecture. Okay. In uh, lab two, we're going to talk about the organ system level. So here's lab two. Okay. And we're going to talk about the organ level here in lab two. And then lab three, we're going to go down to the cellular level. <clears throat> so we're talking about cells. What is a cell next time? And then lab four, we're also going to talk about cells. We're also going to do microscopes. And that's in lab three and four. And then in five, we're going to go and talk about tissues. And so those are groups of cells. So we'll look through the microscope at tissues and see what those are. And then labs 6 through 14, we're going to talk about organ systems and the various organs that are in those uh, organ systems. Okay. So we already talked about the organism level in lab 1. We talked about uh, body regions, body sections, and planes, uh, all those kind of things. So in six, lab 6 through 14, we're going to talk about the, nerve, the skeletal system, um, the nervous system, endocrine system, and integumentary system. So we're talking about four different organ systems in labs 6 through 14. That gives you the uh, uh, overview of the, uh, the course pretty much. So, um, And then let's see. Uh, we're, in lab 5, we're going to look at the various tissues. So that'll be not next time, a couple, time, uh, a couple classes. So we'll have epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous tissues. And so in lecture, you're going to talk a lot about the chemical level. You'll also talk about cells, tissues, and organs, and how some of those work. But in lab, we're going to look at what those things look like. And in lecture, you're going to talk more about the function of those and, and how it works. And we're going to talk more about the structure of how things, what things look like and what, how the structure relates to function. Okay, next slide. So in, uh, in anatomy... Uh, what we look at is structure, and the structure and function are very closely aligned. Um, and I want you to think about this as we go through the, the A and P course. And every time you study an organ system, ask yourself questions about the structure and function, and, and think about each level of hierarchy in, in, the, in the body. So which organs make up the organ system? That's pretty simple. So like for the cardiovascular system, you have the heart and blood vessels. How is each organ structurally adapted to its functions? Well, a heart is made of muscle, and it so and it, it beats and squeezes blood and makes that blood flow around the body through the blood vessels, and it returns to the heart, and it squeezes again and squirts it back around through the blood vessels to the body. And the blood vessels are there, and they contain the, um, the blood within them. The arteries have a thick uh, thicker wall have muscle around it so they so because the heart's pumping it's pushing a lot of pressure into the arteries and so those those arteries are able to maintain their shape because they're more rigid uh, veins are much more flexible and those are returning uh, blood to, back to the heart and the veins are un, under much less pressure so they don't need to be as rigid rigid as the arteries do so that's a way of thinking about how the specialized cell types are, are found and what tissues make up each organ and what they do um, and so then, and think also think about how, um, what types of cells are there in each organ. So you have muscle cells in the heart. You also have um, cells that line the cavities, the um, the atria and the ventricles in the heart. Uh, you have cells that line the inside of the blood vessels. Uh, and we'll talk about all those types of cells later on. Those are endothelial cells that line the in, inside of the blood vessels. And then um, and there's muscle cells around the outside of the blood vessels uh, and connective tissue as well. So uh, let's see. Also, is how is each type of cell structurally adapted to performing the functions? And also think about cell parts or organelles that are predominant in each cell type. And then what types of molecules or macromolecules does the cell contain or secrete? Because those relate to its function as well. Okay. So, so just think about all these kind of questions and think about the organs and, and make pictures in your head as you're going through this. And this will help you 
remember what what each organ, organ system, um, and tissue actually does and cells actually do. Okay, next slide. Okay, so we have these are the um, eleven different organ systems. Uh, you can also um, uh, divide it into twelve, and I'll talk about that in a second. So we have the cardiovascular system, respiratory system, digestive system, urinary system, integumentary system, the lymphatic and immune system, skeletal system, muscular system, nervous system, endocrine system, and reproductive system. And there's the male and female reproductive systems. So always remember there's two of those. The uh, lymphatic and immune systems, um, I kind of in my head divide those into two, two different systems. So that's why I say if you, uh, it could be 12 systems. And some people, uh, we used to divide it into 12. More commonly now, people lump the lymphatic system in with the immune system because there is some immune function. There's um, quite a bit of immune fu immune function working in, in the lymphatic system. A lymphatic system drains fluid from tissues and returns it back to the cardiovascular system. But there's also um, immune cells, white blood cells in the lymphatic system that help protect against disease. So anyway, back to the top. So you can, argue, there can, you can argue academically about whether those are two different systems or one. So if in the book, they lump them together and a lot of texts lump those together now so we'll just keep those as one so the lymphatic and, and immune system so cardiovascular system transports nutrients nutrients chemical messengers gases and wastes in the blood the major organs are the heart and the blood vessels uh, respiratory system it adds oxygen to the blood and it removes carbon dioxide from the blood so the major organs are the nose pharynx which is the throat the larynx trachea bronchi and the lungs um, digestive system breaks down food into units that can be absorbed into the body, eliminates waste and non-digestible fiber in food. Major organs are the mouth, salivary glands, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, intestines, pancreas, liver, and gallbladder. The urinary system removes nitrogenous wastes, maintains uh, body fluid volume, pH, and electrolyte, le electrolyte levels uh, through through the production of urine. So you can you can get rid of salts and those kind of things through the urine. You can also retain salts uh, in the body um, uh, with the, uh, through the uh, urinary system. So you can maintain your electrolyte levels and your pH levels and your body fluid, the body uh, volume, the, body, the fluid volume of the body also. Um, major organs, kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. Integumentary system, uh, it's a protective barrier. So integumentary system, the skin, Okay, so that provides a barrier uh, on the outside of the body. Also, an aids in production of vitamin D. Uh, has sensory receptors for pain, touch, temperature. Uh, does some thermal regulation by sweating. So, major organs are skin and skin structures, including hair, nails, sweat glands, and oil glands. Lymphatic and immune. The uh, lymphatic system returns fluid to the cardiovascular system. And uh, the immune system detects and eliminates disease-causing organisms uh, through white blood cells, um, antibody production, uh, so there's various types of white blood cells. The major organs are lymphatic vessels, lymph nodes, where you have uh, some of the white blood cells reside, and uh, the spleen, uh, which makes uh, type of what's white, or allows a type of white blood cell called the B cell to mature, thymus, where you have maturation of T cells, um, and uh, bone marrow and tonsils. So skeletal system. Um, protects major organs, so you have the rib cage is around your lungs and heart, and as well as uh, protects you know, a little bit of the liver as well, uh, down the side, and stomach and uh, spleen, some of those uh, up, and pancreas, some of those upper organs. Um, it also provides levers and support for body movement, so the major organs are bone and cartilage, and um, and you can you know, argue whether cartilage is an organ or a tissue, so generally we refer, we're going to refer to it as a tissue more than an organ. Um, let's see. But in some in other ways, you can argue that overall a lot of cartilage together is an organ. Muscular system, um, it moves the bones and helps you maintain, like for instance, you maintain posture and you can run and you can move, you can move your arm around, those kind of things. Major organs, skeletal muscle and tendons. Nervous system. 
Uh, you control cell functions with electrical signals, helps control body, body homeostasis. Major organs are brain, spinal cord, and nerves. Endocrine system, you control cell function with hormones, helps control uh, body homeostasis. Major organs, hypothalamus, pituitary gland, pineal gland, thymus, uh, thyroid gland, adrenal gland, uh, glands, ovaries, and testes. And the reproductive system uh, produce gametes, the female uterus, uh, providing an environment for the developing uh, embryo and fetus. And uh, the major organs in the male are testes, uh, ductus deferens, or vas deferens, the penis. And major organs in, organs in the female, ovaries, uterine tubes, uterus, vagina. And you'll notice that some of these organs overlap different organ systems. So like uh, the reproductive, you have the testes and ovaries, okay? And those are also in the endocrine system as well, right? And you also have, um, let's see, what else? Oh, you have the pancreas in the digestive system. And you have the pancreas, you can't see it's behind, it's behind my head on the screen here, so pancreas is also in the endocrine system. Comma, pancreas. So, all right, next slide. So the organ systems, there's, uh, we're going to do the 11. We're going to uh, keep it 11. So uh, we have different mnemonics uh, that you can use. Um, so when I've listed a whole bunch here, you can make up your own if you want. Um, one uh, little uh, one that you can use, my sister Rachel is extremely nervous because Uncle Donnie lied recently. So my muscular sister, skeletal Rachel respiratory is... Integumentary, extremely endocrine, nervous, nervous system, cuz, cardiovascular, uncle, urinary, donny, digestive, lied, lymphatic, and immune, recently, reproductive. You can also use, like, if you want to use just a, uh, an acronym, you can use Murder's Link, Medics Live Under Rock and Roll, Merlin Scrud, Mr. Scud Liner, um, uh, Mariz, RD, Uncle, Lens, Rim, Crud, whatever, you know, whatever you want to come up with, so... Um, but uh, you can use uh, my sister Rachel is extremely nervous because Uncle Donnie lied recently to uh, to remember the organ systems if you want to use that one. So, or you can make up your own, whatever you want to do. All right, next slide. So, here's the organ systems. So we have um, on this slide we have the muscular and skeletal. So my sister and the skeletal system uh, consists of skeletal muscles and tendons. So it produces movement controls body openings. So like your mouth, I can open and close it uh, through muscular movement. It also shiver, you produce heat. And let's see. Um, and the skeletal system um, supports the body, protects uh, internal organs, provides leverage for movement, produces blood cells, stores calcium salts. And you have the, you have the bones cartilage, and joints are all part of the skeletal system. And we're we'll talk about later about storing calcium salts in the bones. Bones are a really good site for storing calcium. So you can take it out and you can put it back in both ways. All right, next slide. Okay, so the next one is res respiratory. Rachel is integumentary. And respiratory system, we have the nasal cavity, the pharynx, which is the throat, the larynx, which is the voice box. Uh, you have trachea, windpipe that branches into the two bronchi. Each one is called a bronchus, and those go then into the lungs. And so the res respiratory system delivers oxygen to the blood, removes carbon dioxide from the body, maintains acid-base balance of the blood. Uh, carbon dioxide, when it enters the blood, makes the blood slightly acidic, uh, forms carbonic acid. So uh, you want to maintain the pH balance uh, in, in the blood. So you want to remove carbon dioxide. Otherwise, you get uh, your blood goes a little acidic. It's called acidosis. And let's see. And so integumentary is, so we have hair, skin, and the associated glands or oil glands or sweat glands. And there's nails, uh, fingernails and toenails. So you have the integumentary system. Protects the body from the external environment, produces vitamin D, retains water, regulates the body temperature, so you sweat, and that um, uh, the water evaporating off your skin will help you um, uh, keep uh, keep cool in the summertime. Because right now it's blazing hot outside. I'm doing this uh, doing this recording in July, so it's uh, it's 
majorly hot outside. I think the high was like 97 today. All right, next slide. And okay, extremely endocrine and nervous, nervous system. So the uh, endocrine system is composed of uh, several glands that are actually up in the brain. Okay, that's in the brain. Pineal gland, hypothalamus, pituitary gland. Then in the throat, you have the thyroid gland. Down around the heart, you have the thymus gland, which is uh, found in younger people and it kind of disappears in older people or as you age. Adrenal glands, they're sitting on top of the kidneys. Pancreas, right behind the stomach. And then you have testes in the male and ovaries in the female. So the endocrine system uh, regulates body functions. Uh, the hypothalamus, pineal gland, or hypothalamus and pituitary gland are, have a lot of uh, regulatory functions in the body. Um, endocrine system regulates the functions of muscles, glands, other tissues, and it secretes uh, chemicals called hormones. And those are uh, small molecules or large uh, or larger macromolecules, maybe uh, proteins. The nervous system, you have the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. Nervous system, it regulates body functions, provides uh, sensation movement, auto, uh, automatic functions, also called autonomic functions, and higher mental functions via, uh, via nerve impulses. Uh, and the autonomic and the higher mental functions are all uh, mediated via, via uh, nerve impulses. And you have nerve impulses going from the, from the body, sensory, coming up to the brain, that's called afferent, and then um, nerve impulses going from the brain and um, um, yeah, from the brain down, and that would be uh, out to muscles or glands, and those are called efferent. So that's, uh, I'll write those out. So afferent is going up to the brain, and efferent comes down, comes down out of the brain. That's efferent. Okay, next slide. Cuz, cardiovascular, uncle, urinary. So cardiovascular, the blood vessels, which are arteries, arteries and veins, and the heart. So cardiovascular system pumps and delivers oxygen poor blood to the lungs, oxygen rich blood to the tissues. So you want to take oxygen to the tissues and then take the carbon dioxide back out of the tissues and then back to the lungs and you exhale and breathe in air, which has about 21% oxygen, and then you uh, breathe out carbon dioxide. Um, and actually you breathe out a lot of um, oxygen as well. You don't utilize all the oxygen you take in, but you do, um, what you breathe out is more carbon dioxide um, than what you breathed in, than the air you breathe in. Urinary system, you have the kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. So the urinary system removes metabolic waste from the blood. You regulate flood, electrolyte, and acid-base balance, and you stimulate blood cell production. Um, next slide. Donnie lied. So Donnie, digestive system, lied, lymphatic, and immune. So the digestive system includes the mouth, salivary glands, esophagus, liver, stomach, gallbladder, pancreas, which are posterior to the stomach, large intestine, small intestine, and the anus, and that'd be posterior in this picture, as you might well imagine. And the digestive system, uh, you digest food, you also chew it up. <clears throat> so, you know, you have teeth in your mouth that chews it up. You have um, saliva you make, the saliva has enzymes that start breaking down food. Then you swallow it, it goes down the esophagus um, and down into your stomach. Your stomach has acid there. It starts breaking it down, and then you put that in a small intestine. Small intestine neutralizes the acid, and then starts breaking down the, the food further, and you have about a 20-foot-long small intestine, and that breaks it down as it travels along through there over the next day or so, and then it goes into the large intestine where you absorb water back out of the food, and then it goes across, up, across, and down, and then you poop it out, so poop out whatever whatever's left over. So, so you digest food, you absorb nutrients in the blood, remove waste, and you regulate uh, fluid and electrolyte and acid-base balances uh, balance there. Uh, lymphatic system, you have the tonsils, you have the lymph nodes, the thymus, the spleen, um, lymphatic vessels, and the thoracic duct. So lymphatic vessels come up, they drain fl drain fluid from tissues, and they um, there's no pump for the lymphatic system. It's just um, pump. It 
the fluid moves along by movement of your muscles. So this is one of the reasons you need to move a lot, so as you keep the fluid uh, coming out of your tissues. So if you sit for a long time, fluid will accumulate in your tissues because you're not moving. So like you, you may have sat in a car for a long time or on a plane for a long time, especially if you sat on a plane for a long time because there's pressure differences that occur there and, and it kind of enhances the effect. But uh, your legs um, will swell a little bit if, if you don't move around because the muscles, what they do is that when they move around, they squeeze these lymphatic vessels, they push against them and it squeezes fluid up and up, up them because they're in the lymphatic vessels, you have these little valves in there. So fluid goes up, but it can't go back. So it goes up and up and up and up and goes right back up. And it goes up through this thoracic duct and then dumps back into these cardiovascular system. So, um, to, to, so that fluid gets returned there, then it can be processed by the kidneys if you need to get rid of some of the fluid. So lymphatic system returns excess fluid, tissue fluid to the cardiovascular system. It also, in the lymph nodes, uh, here, lymph nodes, there's some up there, there's some uh, down here, there's lymph nodes down there, okay, oops, that's too big, a, sorry about that, I'll take off that, um, so lymph nodes, so there's, there's one there, uh, there's on either side, well not one, there's a whole set of them, there's some on the side of your neck, there's axillary under, under your arm, that kind of stuff. Um, those lymph nodes are, uh, lymph nodes are, they're, it's a kind of collection of tissue and they have white blood cells that gather in there. So when you're draining fluid from, from tissues, in case the fluid was uh, accumulating because of inflammation and maybe some bacteria got in there, the bacteria get carried along by the lymphatic system and then they hit these lymph nodes and lymph nodes have white blood cells in there that can destroy that stuff before it gets dumped into your cardiovascular system. Okay, uh, next slide. Recently, reproductive, so we're at the end of the organ system. So we have the reproductive male and female. So in the male, we have the um, uh, vis visible, uh, visible, uh, penis and testes, uh, there's a uh, ductus deferens, or also called the vas deferens, prostate gland and seminal vesicle. And so the re re reproductive system of the male uh, produce and transport sperm, secrete hormones, uh, you have sexual function. And then the female, you have the vagina, uterus, ovaries, uterine tube, or the fallopian tubes, and the mammary glands. So, um, uh, I've got a, a picture later. We'll talk about that. So reproductive system, female. So you uh, produce and transport oocytes, eggs. It's the site of fetal development, fetal nourishment, childbirth, and lactation for the, for the mammary glands. Um, everything else is down in the uh, uterus. And uh, the, all the rest of that stuff is the uterus and the ovaries and the fallopian tubes and the vagina. And also sexual function is also in the re reproductive system. Okay, next slide. So back to our mnemonic for remembering the organ system. So I did them in the order of my sister. Rachel is extremely nervous because Don, Uncle Donnie lied recently. And I'm not sure it's quite the order that's in, it's close to the order that's in the book, but uh, so but you can put it in any order you want. All right, next slide. <clears throat> so normally we would have lab activity number one, and this is identification of or organs on a plastic torso model. I'm gonna show you uh, cadaver photos um, and so that you, so warning, these are actual, this is actual human cadaver. So, um, so just, just so you know what's coming up. All right, next slide. So here we go. Here's, uh, this is the superficial organs. So the organs, if you, when you take off the skin and the first mu and the muscular layer, you're left with what you see is this, this stuff right here. When you take off the ribs as well. So, so we're going to start with the trachea. So trachea is here. All right. Then we have the lungs, number two. We have the heart. And you notice this, there's all this white around the heart. Okay, what is that? Well, that's fat, okay? We have what's called visceral fat. We have cutaneous and visceral fat. Cutaneous is like is the fat that's underneath your skin. And so when you get when you get fat, when you eat a lot of stuff, like I have been doing in the, well, the whole quarantine thing, um, I've been eating way too many pizzas and, and stuff. So anyway, um, I have created, uh, my fat cells have, have created a lot of fat and stored a lot of fat in them. And so I'm 
much larger in my midsection than I used to be. So I'm trying to work on that. So <laughs> hopefully I'll get this down. Anyway, but there's there's also fat that's around around organs, and it uh, fat provides a cushioning function in addition to um, energy storage. So uh, so and we'll talk about those kind of things later on. So diaphragm uh, number four. That's this. So you can tell it's got these kind of stripes here, right? You can see them better over here on on this side. You can see over there there's, there's like stripes. Going down, so that's muscle fibers that are in in the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is your main major muscle for breathing. So, so it pulls down, and expands the cavity, and the lungs expand, and you breathe in. Then it goes back up and, and compresses the the thoracic cavity, and the lungs uh, don't collapse, but they decrease in size and it pushes air out. So, so when you're relaxed breathing, your your diaphragm is going down to breathe in and up to to breathe out. Um, your liver is here here this is also liver here okay your stomach you just see a little piece of it here right um, under, it's mostly underneath the liver there then you have a large intestine you can see some of it coming across here and small intestine is this whole area uh, around through here actually I guess I should do that in white why don't we do that in white so this is your small intestine that you can see all through all through here right and large intestine is this whole bit up through here and then down here, All right? I made it a little bit wide on the right side. Sorry about that. So where's my cursor? There it is. All right. Next slide. Oh, I drew lines on, onto the on the slide so you could point out all the all the pieces. Um, that'll be in the uh, PDF that I post online so you can see that. All right, next. Uh, so if you take off uh, that first su superficial layer of organs and start cutting down into the uh, cadaver, um, here's you can see the trachea a lot better, and you can actually see the trachea as these stripes, these rings. Uh, you can see those in the picture, and those are actually rings of cartilage that are around around the trachea. And so think of it as a, um, like, uh, I'm sure you've used a bendy straw to drink out of. So you take the straw and it's got those, those, little, those little rings around it, right? Well, what that does is it gives you flexibility. If you take a normal straw and you bend it, well, it just collapses. You take a bendy straw and bend it, it bends and keeps that opening open. So that's why you have those rings of cartilage there around the trachea so that you can, I can bend my head down, back, sideways, and all over. And I can still breathe because it holds that trachea open. That's a very critical function there. So um, let's see. Number 13, it's not labeled out here. That's the aorta coming out of the, out of the heart. Uh, so number two is lungs. Heart is number three. So it's been cut open. You can see inside the heart at that point. Uh, number four, there's a little tiny piece of diaphragm up here on top. Uh, there's the edge of it right there. And then uh, liver. We have a, now you can see the stomach a whole lot better underneath here. So here's the whole stomach. Like there. And then large intestine, you can see it better here and here and here. Small intestine, it's been partly, partly removed. So that's why it looks kind of cut up because it was. Because <laughs> the small intestine is there and it winds around all different different ways and so when you cut through it you're gonna have some raggedy pieces kind of sitting there um <clears throat> let's see uh the gallbladder is underneath right here there for number nine and then number 10 is spleen so i'll go all the way over here so there's your spleen over there so spleen's that uh, is kind of like, um, like near the back wall uh, up behind and uh, on the left side um behind the stomach the pancreas is on on underneath the stomach there and I'm not sure if it's in the next slide or not next slide <clears throat> so deeper organs um, no they didn't show it so they didn't show the spleen so the trachea you can see that a whole lot better you can see the rings really well there and you see it branching down into these bronchi right so and you see the, and bronchi branch into bronchioles so these would be that'd be bronchioles there and then you have a uh, part of the lung is there 
and you have another one on the other side. So you can see the bronch, the bronchi and the bronchioles going into the lungs, and they divide further and further and further until they get to what are called alveoli, the little air sacs of the lung. <clears throat> and you can also see the diaphragm, just give you a little um, <clears throat> uh, landmark here. And you, you can see that that edge there. It goes like kind of like that. And on this side, it curves up and over, right? So here's your diaphragm there. Now well, let me go to white. So here's diaphragm here. Here's diaphragm here. There. Okay. So we have the bronchi. What else do we need to do here? Oh, esophagus. Oh, yeah, the esophagus. You'll notice the esophagus is there. Number, it's number 12 here. So the esophagus is there. Esophagus is behind the trachea. So the trachea you can feel right here. And the esophagus is actually back behind it there. So when you swallow, the um, it actually goes up. The um, um, larynx goes up and comes back down. Adam's apple. <clears throat> and it goes up and closes off your windpipe. And so the food and water can pass around it and go down the trachea back behind. And let's see, number 13, that's the aorta there. And let's see, number 14, inferior, inferior uh, vena cava. So that's going up towards the heart, bring, uh, bring uh, blood vessels, uh, bring, bring blood back to the heart. Uh, 15, uh, oh, they do show the pancreas. Sorry about that. <laughs> they do show the pancreas right there behind the stomach. Number 16, adrenal gland right there. Sorry, I drew over it. Kidney, 17. And over here, ureters, uh, interesting, interestingly enough, is right there. So you can see that. And you can see the other one over here on this side. Okay. And then let's see. We have urinary bladder is number 19. You might wonder what this big fat thing is here, right there. It's blood vessels uh, going uh, going down to the legs. So it splits and then goes down to the, to the two legs down there. So coming out of the heart. So it's the aorta going down, and then uh, as it goes, passes down, it splits. Um, let's see. I guess that's pretty much it. And hey, if you, if you want to take a look, this here and here and here, those are all ribs. Okay, so there's a rib. There's a rib. Here's a rib. Okay, so ribs are going around. That's, so they've cut into the ribs uh, fairly deeply there. <clears throat> all right, next slide. So here's the female pelvis, and we have the ovary right here, round part there. There's uterine tube here. You can see it going uh, going up towards. It's this and down all the way down through here. You can see it. I'll try to outline it without obscuring it. And let's see the uterus there, there. Then cervix going down there, and then the um, urinary bladder here, okay, and urethra, oops, there. So you'll notice that the uh, uterus uh, is, is superior to the urinary bladder here, okay, and so when you were in your mama, you were sitting right on top of her bladder for a long, long time. So just, uh, you know, if you get a chance, thank her for putting up with you sitting on top of her bladder for a few months there because that, that ain't a lot of fun. <laughs> so from, from, what, from what I've been told, <laughs> I got two kids, so, so I've, I've been told this quite a bit. Anyway, um, okay, um, next slide. All right, male pelvis. So here we go, urinary bladder, and you'll notice that it's way up here, and guys don't have anything major sitting on top of it except for, you know, um, the um, digestive system, uh, small intestine, large intestines, you know, kind of pushing down on it. Uh, penis down here and, uh, and there. So it actually extends all, uh, extends actually up. There's external part and part of it extends up into the body. Um, scrotum surrounding there and surrounding the testis here. So there's your, uh, there's your male pelvis. Next slide. Okay. So normally we have uh, lab activity one, identification of organs on the tor plastic torso model. Um, then we also um, do uh, drawing and torso. 
Uh, we do a life size one, so you lay down on a piece of paper and draw around it, and then you label the organs, um, draw the organs inside your torso and label them so that you know where they are and name the organs that are in, in each quadrant. And then we also use the anatomical terms to describe the, the locations of the, or, the organs. So, um, so what we want to do is, um, uh, what I want you to do is take a piece of paper and draw these things out yourselves so that um, you, it gives you practice. It gives you a lot of practice on um, uh, draw where the locations of all these are. So if you look just in the book and you just look at the pictures and then and do those, it helps a lot if you draw these out yourselves. So, and then also look at um, quadrant. Think about quadrants as well as the um, the tic tac toe grid, and looking at what organs are in each quadrant, each tic tac toe grid, because. It's actually kind of surprising you get you realize oh these this is actually at the same level as something else or this is below something else when you start looking at the relationships of where something is to something else so that's why I, I encourage you to draw it because you'll draw it and you'll realize oh these things are in different spots than I actually thought they were so and then um, use anatomical terms to describe the location of the organs so think about um, like is this superior or inferior or deep or superficial or left and right, or whatever, and are there pairs of things, or are there single things? So, all right, so we're just, you know, we're really just looking at the abdominal, pelvic, and thoracic organs at this point. So, the chest organs and the, and the stomach organs and the pelvic organs. The next slide. So, and this was, um, <laughs> I just thought this was kind of funny. I, I took, this is a plastic torso model, so I'm going to point out some of the things that are on here, but uh, when I when I put this into PowerPoint, it automatically generates a description, which I thought was hilarious. It's it automatically thought this was a, per, a person sitting at a table with a cake, which I thought it was just a scream. So anyway, <laughs> so that's so why I had to leave it in there. So anyway, uh, what I'm going to point out here is so we have ribs. There's a rib. Here's a rib. There's a rib. Okay, and this is the lung. So there's your lung there. And let's see, we have kidney, that's a kidney there. And there's, uh, here's a spleen. See here, so it's back behind the stomach. And let's see, here's another kidney over here. Kidney. Here's your inferior vena cava. Here's your aorta coming down, it's branching, okay? And you'll notice that there's a brand, there's a blue and a and a red. Blue is always veins, red's always the arteries, and they're but they travel pretty much together. So because they, they're going to the same places, you have artery go taking blood down somewhere and then vein bring it back up. So they got to be you know fairly close to each other. Um, what you see right here, all this these things right here, and there's roundish things there. So that's a lymph node, the roundish thing there. And there's, uh, there's another one there, okay. And these white things, those are lymph or lymphatic vessels, okay. And let's see what else is in here. Um, yeah, so here down here is the liver. That's liver. And this part right here is the gallbladder. It's been tipped over and left upside down. Um, let's see. Here's a stomach right here. This is the large intestine. As is that there and over here. And this is small intestine here. And this is uh, this yellow yellow part right here. Oops, too far. That's actually uh, it's yellow. It's so it's fat, but it's also called. Uh, it's a special structure called the greater omentum. You don't have to know that. And man, I can't write on this thing. Um, let's see what else. Am I missing a thing on here? Those are the major things I wanted to point out on this on, the, on this torso model. So this and there's a picture actually off of momentum that I've pulled off just to show you guys so and um, let's see I guess that yeah that and there oh sorry I missed, missed this one here's the heart right here 
those are ribs I was pointing to there. And anything else? Oh, this guy right here. There's your adrenal gland. Okay, so you can take all these things and um, take pictures and label them. Draw your own pictures. Draw your own diagrams just to um, to make sure you know uh, what things are. Okay, and uh, let's see. All right, next slide. Okay, so we've gone on from organs and organ systems. Uh, we're talking about homeostasis. So how does this? You know, why do we worry about organ systems and and uh, why do we worry about the organs? Well. All the organs and organ systems work together to maintain what's called homeostasis. Homeostasis uh, is derived from Greek words uh, homeos, uh, meaning similar, and stasis, meaning standing still. So, um, refer it, so it's referring to the body's actions uh, to maintain an internal condition uh, within a narrow, a narrow, relatively stable physiological range. Okay, so it requires coordination of multiple organ systems to respond to changes. To maintain this equilibrium, this homeostasis, and it's a dynamic, ongoing, continuous process. When you stop doing that, you're dead. Okay, so death is can can be defined as an irreversible loss of homeostasis. So your body can no longer bring bring itself back into homeostasis. So that's when you're considered dead. So. Um, and you have control mechanisms called feedback loops. These are self-regulating. And um, they, have, they have components. Uh, you can break it down into a receptor, a control center, and, and an effector. Okay, so a receptor, you have a stimulus. Um, the room gets, you know, the air conditioner just came on, so I feel a little bit cooled air, cool air on me. So I realize that. I realize, oh, that's, I feel a breeze. I feel cold, cool air on me. So my body was getting warm, was about to start sweating, so, it, so I... I'm no longer doing that. If the if it keeps going, I'll get cold, and the receptors will say, "Oh, you're getting cold." It sends a signal to my brain, the control center, which receives information from the receptor and then processes that and says, "What do I do with that information?" Oh, you're getting cold. I need to send a signal out to an effector, so that would be out to the muscles, and I start shivering. Okay, so you have sensors in your skin that pick up whether detect whether you're cold. Your brain decides what to do with that incoming information, that afferent uh, electrical stimulus, electrical signal coming to the brain. <clears throat> the brain decides what to do with that information, sends out an electrical signal to the muscles to produce a response. In this case, if I'm cold, if it, you know, it was the middle of wintertime, out, out, you know, out without a jacket, I'll start shivering um, to, to bring my body temperature back up. Shivering movement of muscles produces heat, and so my body temperature will come back up. So. A model you can use for this is the thermostat in your house or TV in your home with a remote. You can, you know, say, say, uh, you know, I want to change the channel. Uh, your brain, like, let's do, do the TV. So you're watching TV, you don't like the show, and you say, oh, I don't like the show. And your your eyes are receiving the signal, your ears are receiving the signal. It goes to your brain, and your brain says, I don't like the show. What am I going to do? I'm going to change the channel. So I send a signal to my thumb to to do the um, do the remote and change the channel. Or you holler at one of your kids to go change the channel if you're like me and you're older and you didn't have remotes back in the back in those days. Um, you can also think about the thermostat in your house. The thermostat in your house is the control center. So temperature drops and in your house um, and when it drops it gets out of a certain range. You, you set the um, you set the thermostat at a certain certain point. Once it drops below a certain point it'll it'll send a signal to your um, heater to turn on and start blowing heat into the house. And then when the temperature comes back up, it sends another signal to turn off the heater. So it stops. And so it keeps your temperature in a certain range. So you have, um, so the in this case, the control center of the thermostat is, the, is a sensor, and it's also the control center at the same time. So it's a sensor. It sends out a signal to, for, to the control center, which sends a, a signal to the effector to, to turn on. And this is another signal to turn off when it when it, it gets warm enough. So same thing if I'm shivering. Once I get warm enough, I'll stop shivering. So or I go into a nice warm house. Um, so negative feedback loops. These are also these are usually called uh, feedback loops. Um, these control mechanisms. 
Uh, most of them, are, almost all of them are negative feedback loops. Um, the stimulus that you get produces a physiological response that opposes or counteracts the stimulus. So if, you're, if you start feeling cold, you start shivering, and then, you, then when you get warm enough, you stop shivering. Positive feedback loop means that the response will enhance the stimulus. So if I'm cold, I don't make myself colder, I make myself warmer. So it's, it's, a, it's opposite. So that means that's what negative is referring to. It means an opposite response. Positive feedback means it's, it makes the, stimu stimu makes the stimulus, um, it enhances the stimulus. So uh, think about um, if you have a baby and you're, uh, and you're producing milk, feeding the baby, as long as the baby's suckling, it produces, uh, that makes your body produce hormones to keep producing milk. So it's a positive feedback loop. Something happens, a stimulus is to keep producing milk. So the stimulus is not to shut off milk production. And the lack of stimulus, when the baby stops suckling, the lack of stimulus, then milk production decreases and, and, uh, and goes away. So, all right, next slide. <clears throat> so here's a diagram from your book. Talking about the control of body temperature by a negative feedback loop. So you have the stimulus. Well, let's see. Uh, I'll start with the uh, yeah. Let's start with stimulus. So you have a basically a thermostat. Okay. You have sensors in uh, you have your body's temperature decreases below a normal range. You're out in the cold. Not, don't have a jacket on. It's minus minus 20 outside. And here's your normal range right here. Well, oops. Body temperature dropped down a little low. So receptors. In your skin, okay, this is a cross section of skin right here. There's uh, sensory receptors that are connected to nerves, and those send a signal to the control center, the brain. Okay, and the brain gets this information. Thermal regulatory cells in the brain get this information, and they they say, "Oh my goodness, I'm getting cold, so I need to do something about it." One thing I know to do about it is to make myself shiver. So you send out an efferent message to skeletal muscle, so this is skeletal muscle, and that'll be your effector, and it, and you have a response, you start shivering, and as you shiver, you produce heat, and when the body temperature comes back to normal, you're in, within the normal range again, then you stop shivering. So that's how your negative feedback loop works, and, um, and then you can continue up, and, and so it actually it's a loop, it goes around and around in circles, okay? All right, next slide. So there's uh, there's an activity in your book um, talking about organ systems interacting. This is make you, it's a thought experiment. Just make you think about organ systems that are interacting. So what organ systems interact to produce this response? Um, well, in this case, you know the brain is one. Uh, that's an organ. So the nervous system would be one. That'd be the control center. You also have the skin, so the integumentary system with the sensory receptors in there is another one. It, the effector is the skeletal muscles, so the muscular system would be another one. And then you would have, um, um, let's see, also, um, you can also include the cardiovascular and respiratory systems in there if you want. The book, the book does. Um, cardiovascular, I guess you really have to because the muscle is going to need oxygen to shiver, and it's going to need blood to bring that oxygen to it. So it, the book just mentions cardiovascular, but I think you also ought to include the respiratory system. And a lot of times you talk about the cardiovascular and respiratory systems together. You refer to it as the cardiopulmonary system. So anyway, um, the other th thing you can think about, well, maybe digestive is, is include in this. Not really uh, for short-term shivering because... You don't need any extra food. Your muscles have a glycogen store, so they can break down glycogen into glucose and use that as uh, fuel uh, to uh, to shiver. If you keep shivering for a long time, you're going to need more fuel, and so you you would need to eat something um, to continue to keep your, your glucose stores up. But if you shiver for just a little while, you really don't involve the digestive system. So primarily, these systems are involved in uh, in maintaining uh, body temperature if your body temperature drops. Okay, next slide. So here's the lab activity three. It talks about it. So, um, so you have the nervous system. You have the integumentary system where the receptors are. You have the cardiovascular system and the muscular system. And you, you can think about how all these things work together. The sensory receptors 
uh, in the integumentary system, send a signal or receive a signal, and that signal is taken to the brain by the, by the nervous, uh, through the nerves in the nervous system. The brain thinks about it and sends a signal down to the skeletal muscle system to shiver. The cardiovascular system sends uh, oxygen and takes carbon dioxide away so that the skeletal muscles can do their job. So those are the four, those are the four systems that are primarily involved in, in this example of homeostasis and keeping your body temperature at the right range. Okay, next slide. Okay, normally we would do a rat dissection. I'll post a video for that in case we're not in lab doing this. Um, what you want to do in the rat dissection is you want to find the following organs, and these are all pretty easy to find, um, and see if you can find all of these, see if you can find a gallbladder as well. So, um, and um, let's see. Well, I guess I'll go, I'll go ahead and tell you this since uh, this will be a video online. Uh, rats don't have a gallbladder, so... Um, and the reason is humans um, have a gallbladder because we eat fat. So we want to um, collect and store bile. So bile is used to emulsify fats. It actually mixes with fats so that we can absorb it and we can break it down and absorb it. Um, rats tend not to eat that much fat. They tend to eat uh, things that don't have a lot of fat in it. So they really don't need, they, they can make bile and they can secrete it directly into the small intestine, but they don't need a store of it like, like humans kind of, kind of do. So anyway, so rats don't have a gallbladder Shh. Yeah. and, uh, <laughs> don't, don't tell everybody, uh, that's your little secret. Anyway, uh, next slide. So, all right. So that's the end of the organ system lab. Uh, next time we'll do the microscope and begin looking at the structure of the cell. We'll talk about organelles uh, in the cell and we'll also do cell division, probably not next time, but the time after that. Um, as well as talk about scientific method in lab four. So lab three will be the microscope and cell structure. Um, I'll post a video of a rat dissection so you can see how that goes. And uh, let's see. And then the test will be over uh, organs, organ systems, and there'll be a study guide posted on momentum as well. So, all right. I will see you guys next time. Bye.